Hello, Fight Friends. Andy Cotterell here with a special treat for you. Today, our guest is Kelton Sneave. Kelton is a newly uh, uh, anointed professional fighter. He's got a record of 1-0, and o, coming into that with a 6-1 amateur record. And he is fighting this Friday night at, in Prior Lake, Minnesota at LFA 174. Hey, Kelton, how are you doing today? Um, I'm doing great, Andy. I just want to say thank you for having me on the show. And I just want to extend a thank you uh, from myself and probably behalf on all fighters uh, for the coverage that you do of the sport. Just uh, just a thank you. Mm. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, I love doing it. So it's all good. So uh, I mentioned in my little video snippet yesterday, I posted that a lot of fight fans might not be that familiar with you. And I explained why. Can you just take a minute or two and just uh, introduce yourself, say who you are, where you fight from and, and what your background is? So I'm I'm Kelton Sneavy, uh, aka the Conqueror. I fight out of Thunder Bay, Ontario. I train out of Thunder Valley Martial Arts, and I train at a leading edge MMA as well. Um, the reason I'd say the Canadian MMA scene isn't familiar with my name potentially is because uh, most of my fighting is done in America. So a lot of uh, a lot of my career, basically all of it, has been done in the United States. So I could see why there's a disconnect. Um, personally, just for location wise, Thunder Bay is a border town. We're fairly close. So we usually make the, the jump down and go take on the United States competition. Mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting because oftentimes when I hear about upcoming fights, I'm aware of a lot of fights because the fight community is fairly small. So if one fighter is going, oftentimes they're going to bring like a handful of their teammates, like five or six of them are going to go down. So it's more almost like it's bigger news. But with you and another one, your teammates, Devin, uh, it's almost like the event was happening. I think the first couple of times your fight was already over before I even realized it happened. And I was wondering to myself, who are these young Canadian kids going down to America and, and winning these fights? So it was kind of cool to kind of see that. Do you ever feel like uh, like an underdog going down to the States because you fight there so often? Um, You know what? Like, yeah, I, I, I like the feeling of going into someone's backyard and uh, – silencing uh, silencing their crowd i would say uh we have brought some crowds down to cheer us on in closer fights like minneapolis it's about six hours from thunder bay so our last event there at uh ignite we had a good amount of people in the the stand so we had about 55 uh canadians come down with us and you know thunder bay they're loud they're loud they cheer so we got to hear our crowd cheer but most of the time we, we do roll down and we know we are the underdogs and we always say like we never want a decision because in our heads we're never going to get it. So we always just say if you don't get the finish, don't expect to win. And speaking of finishes, that's something you do very well. You've got finishes by submission, a whole bunch of wins by submission and wins uh, by strikes and even one by a cut. Tell us about your fight style, what, what you're like inside the cage. So I've always said this is like kind of my moniker is I, I'm like a Rubik's Cube. Um, I'm complete on all sides as a fighter. I don't think that I have a specific style I need to take someone out with. I feel that after I'd say about maybe even 30 seconds, I can get a gauge for where they want the fight, how they want it to play out. And then we're going to take them where they're weakest, where they don't want to be. And when we can find that hole and expose it, it's a strength, right? If you can, if you have the ability to perform uh, multiple techniques, like I, I, like you said, I'm not just uh, stick to this game plan and this is our only route to the finish. Like I feel like that I can finish people in multiple ways. Mm -hmm. Tell me about your uh, training background. Like you're how old right now? I, I'm 24 years old, and I started training uh, not seriously. When I was about 14, right, I just picked up boxing and, and kind of dabbled with it. And then I'd say around 17, 18, I started to get serious with it. Um, I had an amateur fight, and my primary style that I trained in was uh, like Muay Thai and Jiu-Jitsu. Well, that's what I started with. And then as I, as I grown over the years in Thunder Bay, I uh, also started going to leading edge and then working on my wrestling, my jujitsu there as well. And my boxing. And, um, that's why I do the split gyms, right? I get good Muay Thai training at Thunder Valley where I started. And then leading edge also has good boxers to offer and, uh, and good jujitsu as well. Perhaps the, the most well-known Canadian fighter to come at leading edge was Nathan Gunn. Is he still kicking around these days? Is he still training? 
You you'll see Nathan uh, here and there. I will say that, um, but you know, life life happens. You got dad responsibilities. Things change, yep. right? And uh, that that becomes the priority. But yeah, we'll definitely see Nathan here and there for uh, time to time. What's your life like outside of fighting? What do you do for fun? And what do you, do you have a job? Uh yeah, I have a job. I actually work as like a medical transfer attendant. So uh, we have a service here in Thunder Bay, full time job. You got to work, pay the bills, right? And That's right. Um, on the side, you know, like I'm just a guy who hangs out with family, right? You like you spend your time with family. You give I give so much to this sport, uh, honestly. That sometimes you got to just cherish those downtime moments. And but you know, hanging out with the boys is always fun too. You always got to hang out with the boys. You know, that's a you know cherishing those moments. That's a lesson that some people don't learn until they're much older, if they even learn it at all. So that's good on you already. Yeah, I try to. Uh, to take advice from older people. They they live longer. They they know more shit than you do. So <laughs> that's yeah. something I've learned. It's funny whenever I hear uh, young people say things like that. I, I think to like my age. I'm 54 and I've got lots of friends my age too. And I think some of us are pretty stupid. Like <laughs> we don't know everything. So hey, just hey, take everything what? we say with a grain of salt. I always say don't confuse uh, intelligence with experience. Right. That's right for sure. Uh, what are your uh, are you at a point yet? I know you just won an O in, in a pro career. Is this something you're looking at long term? I mean, are you looking at oh yeah, your aspirations? Yeah, certainly. There's that. I wouldn't be in this. I wouldn't do it if that wasn't the goal. That's the way I see it. If uh, if I'm going to dedicate uh, this much of my life and this much of my time and and my I pour all of it into it, right? I pour my heart and soul into this. So it's like if I'm not doing it to be the best, there's no point. And that's what I've said to everyone that's ever asked me. That's it. That like it's uh it's that or bust, in my opinion. Yeah. So this Friday night it's Cody Milhausen. What do you know about this guy? Um, I know he's a grappler, primary grappler out of a, a start BJJ, which is a gym down in Minnesota. I'm familiar with them. I've tr I fought on cards alongside their fighters as well. So I kind of, I kind of know what I'm getting myself into and I know what I'm, I'm seeing into this fight, like as the approach, he's a grappler. Uh, he's scrappy. He's tough. Um, and yeah, like it's a good test. He's three and two as a pro. He was five and zero oh as an amateur. So he represents like a good challenge and and I think mm -hmm. that it's exactly what I need at this point in like my career. I need someone who's going to try and test my mettle. Um, but personally, I, I don't think he has the technical prowess to even give me trouble. I think I get him out of there inside one. Wow, that's a pretty big prediction. Yeah, I I, see, I honestly feel that. I just I see that I see a lot of things. I'm not going to reveal my game plan, obviously, but um, I see holes that I'm going to exploit early and often. Nice. Okay, well, uh, I just want to have a quick chat with you and introduce you to the Canadian MMA fans and maybe even some international fans are watching this as well. You never know. So, uh, you know, you're 1-0. Hopefully after this weekend, you're going to be 2-0. What's next from there? Just keep training and keep fighting? Yeah, of course. You know, um, one thing I'll always say is uh, it's metaphor, like, right? Like one step, uh, one foot in front of the other. Um, it's it's true. Uh, you need to look at life like that and you need to look at fighting like that. I, As much as I like to look ahead and plan, um, I take it day by day. Right. Um, uh, so the goal right now is Friday, right? That's all, that's all I see. And that's all it's going to be my primary focus until Friday. So, you know, after that, you know, I might have to hop back on here, talk to you, and then we can hash out the game plan. We'll do that for sure. How long is the journey to Prior Lake, Minnesota? Is it close? Is it far? Uh, it's about six and a half hours drive. So it's okay. It's so you're leaving when, what, what Wednesday? Yeah, I'm taking off Wednesday, and uh, yeah, we'll be down Wednesday, and then, you know, do the thing, cut some weight, make weight, rehydrate, and then take this guy out in front of his people. Who's your team they're bringing down with you? Who's uh, your, your, do you have a main coach, and do you have any, yeah, any uh, say, so people I got walking my, out of the cage? My my coach that I started with, uh, Bill Kushner, uh, William Kushner, uh, head coach at Thunder Valley Martial Arts. He's uh, like my head striking coach, and then I have uh, Devin Lose. Um other pro fighter out of Thunder Bay. Me and him actually, it's a, it's a great story. I love that guy to death. Um, me and him linked up when we were uh, in like 2019. We'd already fought one or two fights before we'd even met. 
And we linked up, started like cross training with each other. And that's how I really started training at leading edge is because, you know, having another fighter with the, the same dedication, same lifestyle, blah, blah, blah. It, it's, it's a good drive, right? It's like, it almost becomes competition, healthy competition with your peers. So me and him started training in 2019 and, you know, we started kicking everyone's ass after that. So we were just taking everyone out and, um, he's going to be coming down with me. He's like been there with every, uh, been to every fight I've had and cornered me. So I'll have him there for sure. And then my last corner is uh, like my other best friend, Ross Guitar. I literally grew up with this guy since we were four. He's he fights Muay Thai. So, you know, he trains at my uh, Muay Thai gym. So it's we got the team, the family, you know. Oh, that's always it's always good to have that kind of support because it makes you, uh, you know, you don't want to disappoint them at the very least. Right. They're, they're there for you, um, you know. No, that's what I say. It that. like, too. It's good, right? Like I, it's I, I like that. I like that. I'm here to represent. I'm here to. It's bigger than just me. Yeah. Well, in a, a, another additional uh, reason, I'm sort of glad I'm chatting with you now is because up until right now, I was mispronouncing in my head both yours and and Devin's last names. So I've got it right now. So Kelton Sneevy and Devin Lose. I, I yeah. thought he was Losage, but I guess it's Lose. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, no problem. No worries at all. I mean, it was going to be found out sooner or later. <laughs> the secret is out. Yeah. Okay, Kelton, uh, that's all the questions I have right now. Do you have anything you'd like to add? Do you have anyone you'd like to thank before we go? Um, Yeah, just all, all the training partners at, at Leading Edge, all the training partners at Thunder Valley. Um, those are my teammates and those are the people who help me get better every day. So this whole journey would not be possible without those people. And I just want to shout out my sponsors as well. Um, Macero Construction, they've been a longtime sponsor of mine and they've always supported this dream with unwavering doubt and uh, events too as well. And Valente's Music, those those sponsorships, you know, those are the guys that are really helping. So we need those people right now, not when we're already on the big stage. We need those people right 100%. now. 100%. So yeah. yeah, I appreciate them. And those are the people you're going to remember for the support too, like before you make it big, before everybody knows your name. Damn right. All right, Kelton, man, listen, I really appreciate uh, chatting with you. Like I said, I've been a fan for a long time, so I'm really happy I got to meet you, air quotes. And uh, best of luck this Friday night in Minnesota, and, uh, and good luck. Thank you so much, Andy. It was a pleasure to meet you as well. All right, take care. Bye.